This is the GED review video for expressions and polynomials. Okay, factoring. Okay, we started one before. Example one is a little bit similar to that. So we're going to try and do the reverse distributive property. So we're going to see what goes into both of our terms. We can pull out a 2, and we could also pull out an x. Okay, so what times 2x would give us 6x squared? Well, 2 times 3 gives us a 6, and x times x would give us the x squared. Okay, minus 2 times 2 would give us the 4, and we have x and x, so we don't need any other x's. So this is our factored answer. In example two, it's a trinomial, so it's a little bit different. There's nothing that goes into each of our terms. But what we can do is kind of like a reverse FOIL. We're going to create two sets of parentheses. Okay, well, in this one it's not bad, because in order to create x squared, it's just going to be x and x. Because x times x gives us the x squared. But now, we need to find two numbers that are going to multiply to negative 8, but then also add to negative 2. Okay, so our options for negative 8 would be 1 and 8, but none of those will work adding to negative 2. But we could also have 2 and 4. And let's say if we make that 4 negative, 2 times negative 4 would be negative 8, and 2 plus negative 4 would give us negative 2. So we're going to take these numbers and fill them in over here. So we're going to have an x plus 2, because that's a positive 2, and then an x minus 4. And that is our factored answer. The good thing about factoring is you could always go back and check to see if you did it correctly. If we now FOIL this, we should get back our original question. So x times x is x squared x times negative 4 is negative 4x, 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So we get x squared minus 2x minus 8. Okay, example 3 is very similar to example 2. But the problem is we don't just have x squared out front. So you have to play around with it a little bit. It's kind of like a guess and check. Okay, it's quite possible that we might have x and 6x in our parentheses. Okay, and then we need to figure out two numbers that multiply to negative 15 and then add to negative 1. Okay, but in this case we need to keep in mind that the numbers that we choose might also be multiplied by other numbers here. So it's not exactly like this. We have to plug the numbers in and play with them. Okay, so maybe we could try negative 3 and a positive 5 because those multiply to negative 15. But what happens is we'll get a positive 5x here and a negative 18x here which would be a negative 13x. So that doesn't work. Okay, maybe we could do 1 and 15. We'll say this one's negative, this one's positive. In this case, we'd have a negative 15x on the outside and a positive 6x on the inside. So that would add to negative 9x, which isn't negative 1x. So like I said, you have to play around with it. Okay, 
We could also do 2x and 3x. Okay. Let's try 3 and negative 5 and see if that works. 2x times 3x is 6x squared. 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. 3 times 3x is 9x. And 3 times 5 is negative 15. And then these two together will give you your negative x. So this is the correct factored answer. Okay, in this case, we have a polynomial with four terms. Nothing goes into each of them. This method won't work because this only works for trinomials. Okay, but in this case, we can kind of look at our pairs of terms and see if we can pull anything out. So I'm going to treat these as a set, and I'm going to treat these as a set. Well, looking at 3x cubed minus 2x squared, I could actually pull out an x squared. That would mean that I'd have an extra 3 and an extra x, and then over here I'd have an extra 2. Well, now looking at my blue set, I have 12x minus 8. I could pull out a 4 which means I'd have 3x left, and I'd have a 2. And now from each of those sets, we actually pulled out the same binomial. So what we're allowed to do is we can say, well, one of our pairs of factored terms is 3x minus 2, and then we're going to combine our extra stuff together. So we're going to multiply that by x squared plus 4. And finally, there's certain special cases. This is one of them. Okay, when you have a binomial, but inside the binomial we have perfect squares, what we can do is we can say, let's take the square root of each of them, so the square root of x squared will be x, the square root of 16 will be 4, and one of them is going to be plus, and one of them is going to be minus. Because what happens there is we have a positive 4x and a negative 4x, and our middle plain x terms disappear. Okay, now we have a polynomial in our numerator and our denominator. So what we can do is we can factor both of our polynomials and see if we can simplify the expression at all. Okay, so this one here on top, we have x and x. We need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to negative 2. So that would be negative 4 and 2. On the bottom, we can pull out a 2 which would be x minus 4 left. And then since we have an x minus 4 in the numerator and an x minus 4 in the denominator, we can cross them off. And we are left with x plus 2 over 2.